After the craziness of a late Wednesday night trade bringing Marcus Smart to the Memphis Grizzlies, a relatively low-key NBA draft for Memphis, a selection at number 45 that raised some eyebrows in terms of potential, a selection at 56 that nobody knows who he is, so we're going to wait on that one, and then some interesting comments from Zach Kleiner. We're going to talk about that all and more on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies. Let's lock in. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a fun-filled Friday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. I am your host for this episode, Joe Mullinax. My good buddy, pal, and co-host of Michael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. He had a late night working and covering the NBA draft. Zach Kleiman's press conference or press availability after the draft. He deserves a day off covering for me earlier in the week. So I'm flying solo on this fabulous Friday. And I'm so glad that you're with me. However, you're checking out Lockdown Grizzlies. This episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts as proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Make sure that you're checking us out, liking, commenting, rating, reviewing, subscribing, all those fun things. Thank you so much to everyone that came and checked out our Marcus Smart episode of the show That was a pretty successful uh, podcast and video on YouTube. So thank everyone for checking that out. Hopefully folks will stick around and continue to make the Michael and I part of your NBA and Memphis Grizzlies experience as the offseason grinds forth. Speaking of the offseason, the NBA draft has come and gone. The 2023, excuse me, uh, variety at the very least. Not a ton of surprises, maybe a reach here or there. Nothing too shocking. Uh, The Memphis Grizzlies did their business the day before, if you remember correctly. We talked about it on yesterday's episode to Michael and I, Marcus Smart coming to Memphis. And one of the ways that that deal went down was the Grizzlies sending out the number 25 pick in Thursday night's proceedings, sending it to Boston as part of the three-team trade with Washington and the Celtics. So Marcus Smart hasn't been announced yet officially, so Zach Kleiman, who we'll talk more about here later in the show, was not able as the Grizzlies GM to formally comment on Smart's arrival in Memphis via trade. That will come once the trade is actually finished and finalized. I am intrigued by what Kleiman said, but we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. The first thing that was interesting, at least to me, was they trade out of the first round to bring in Marcus Smart, which DeMichael and I covered yesterday. Check out that show if you missed it. We're both pretty excited, and we think that was the right decision. At number 45 overall, a young man by the name of G.G. Jackson, literally the youngest player in the 2023 NBA draft pool. He is 18 years old, does not turn 19 years old until December. So he is 18 and a half, basically, Roughly the same age as Bronny James, LeBron James's son, who's about to be a senior in high school, I believe. So this is a young man who decided to reclass, get out early, played at South Carolina, struggled. But what this young man is capable of is having talent, scoring the basketball, creating off the dribble. He is a pretty impressive talent in a variety of ways. I was surprised that this guy was the pick. Not necessarily because I think it's a mistake to take a player like G.G. Jackson at that point in the draft. Obviously, he is not anywhere near ready to play in the NBA. He had inconsistency issues at South Carolina. He's not going to be in a position to be consistent at the NBA level. The reason that I personally was hesitant about this G.G. Jackson selection was his immaturity. There were numerous issues while he was at South Carolina interacting with coaches negatively, poor responses to conflicts and adversity with players and fellow teammates. 
He's apologized for those things. I do think, you know, the he who is without sin cast the first stone logic makes a ton of sense here to use uh, that, that, that philosophy. But the Grizzlies are in a position where they need more adults in the room, right? That's one of the reasons that DeMichael and I are so excited about the Marcus Smart trade. Marcus Smart is a grown man, and he carries himself in that fashion, both on and off the basketball court. Gigi Jackson is very much not a grown man. He is still very much developing, developing not just as a basketball player, but as a person. He is a defensive struggle, considering he has a six foot nine frame and almost a seven foot wingspan. There really shouldn't be an issue defensively like there was for Jackson in the SEC. He was inefficient in his scoring because he had some Carmelo Anthony to his game. He really prioritized creating off the dribble, taking some difficult shots. He can get one track minded in terms of how he creates offense for others or how he creates offense for himself. His game is not malleable right now. It has the potential to be. And I do think that's an important point to make. This is a young man, like I said, not even 19 years old yet. Won't be 19 until well into the G League season. He is a project, the definition of. But the beautiful thing about the two-way contract, the beautiful thing about how Memphis is going to utilize G.G. Jackson is they don't need him or expect him to be a contributor this coming season. They need him to get better as a member of the Memphis hustle. And that is really moving forward the ideal use of the second round pick because you can certainly use multiple second round picks to add depth and talent. There are several guys that went in the second round that are probably going to be solid NBA players, maybe sooner rather than later. Gigi Jackson is not one of those guys. You can go the opposite end of the spectrum like Memphis did and bring in someone who you believe has the physical talent to potentially dump somewhere down the road, be a really good basketball player, even if they're not there currently. I liken it, and I've talked about it this way with the G League before. I liken it to the baseball minor league system, right? Gigi Jackson basically just got drafted out of high school, and that doesn't mean that the 18-year-old is going to come up and be a phenom playing for the Memphis Grizzlies. It means that he is now going to be in a position to go to a developmental league, to be coached in a developmental way, and to have his game grown organically and naturally, not forced at the NBA level. That is a positive. That is a good thing. And again, a good use of the second round pick, talent falls, you take a swing on it. I am not sure that he could be counted on in any way, shape, or form. Again, the immaturity concerns me, and I think that he got some bad advice and how everything played out at South Carolina. Probably shouldn't have reclassed, probably should have stayed with the Gamecocks, and yet here he is. The Grizzlies are basically redshirting him. And that is an interesting development because they need contri contributors. And we'll talk more about that with Zach Kleiman and his comments here in a moment. Uh, Gigi Jackson could be a contributor down the road. And he might be a solid player for the Memphis Hustle in South Haven this coming season. He will not be a solid player for the Memphis Grizzlies. It is a long-term upside swing. And again, in the second round at number 45 overall, you can use that pick in worse ways. I like his frame. I like his size. I like the idea that he's able to create off the dribble for himself. He has the tools necessary to be successful. Applying those tools, maximizing the time in practice, finding ways to get better beyond the court, those are all things to keep an eye on when it comes to G.G. Jackson moving forward. Zach Kleiman, the GM of the Grizzlies, said that it is likely that he will be signing a two-way contract that means that Jackson will be spending a majority of his time with the Memphis Hustle, the G League affiliate of the Grizzlies there in South Haven, Mississippi. That is where Jackson should be because, again, you could, he, he should be a high school senior, right, roughly, at the very least, a, a college freshman. So you're looking at a situation where he has to develop. He needs that time, certainly should not be forced. The good news is the Grizzlies don't necessarily need him right now. That's a major positive. Uh, Zach Kleiman talked about G.G. Jackson in the selection at number 45 because he was able to, obviously, and numerous other topics in his post-draft media availability. Our DeMichael Cole was there, and I'm going to give you some quotes from Kleiman directly from DeMichael's Twitter feed. Obviously, the Commercial Appeal will have articles on it. Make sure you're checking that out, but I'm going to give you a little taste 
of what Michael heard from Zach Kleiman and the other assembled media heard there in Memphis at FedEx Forum next year on Locked On Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Ooh, I love Bird Dogs. I don't know about you guys, but I love to be comfortable while also looking fashionable when I go golfing, when I go camping, wherever I'm at, I want to look like I know what I'm doing when it comes to the shorts, the pant region with the legs cut off. Bird Dogs make you look good. They do the exact same kinds of things that regular shorts do, except they fit way better. They are uh, not made of a strict or a stiff restricted cotton. They invented at Bird Dogs cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but it stretches so you will not, or so you will get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. They are wonderful to wear. They also have an offer where you can get a free Yeti style tumbler with a purchase. So I'd highly recommend that you check out Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take off your bird dogs. We promise you. Zach Kleiman, his media availability. Some thoughts on some comments next here on Locked On Grizzlies. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am your host for this episode, Joe Mullinax. My partner, DeMichael Cole, not able to join me on this Friday edition of the show. Very busy man. Had a very late night. We're going to let him get some rest. He covered for me earlier in the week. I'll happily cover for him as we close out our draft week, right? We've been talking a lot about the NBA draft over the last couple of weeks. Obviously, that event has now come and gone. And Gigi Jackson is the member of the Grizzlies that is most likely to contribute in some way, shape, or form in the season ahead. Uh, the Grizzlies also made a selection at pick number 56, and I'm not going to insult your intelligence. Tarek Biberovic, uh, he plays in Turkey. He did not play a ton this past season. It's the definition of a draft and stash. They have his rights if he chooses to come to the NBA. From looking at his numbers, he averaged like three points a game. I don't think Biberovic is going to be coming to the United States anytime soon, except maybe for summer league or something like Giannis Timma did way back in the day. Shout out to Giannis Timma. I hope he's doing well. So we'll ignore Mr. Biberovic for now, and we'll focus on the post-draft media availability, the conversations that the Michael Cole and other uh, our beloved DeMichael Cole and other members of the Memphis media had with Zach Kleiman. Zach Kleiman talked about a variety of topics and we'll focus on the, uh, the, the highlights coming straight from DeMichael Cole, my co-host's Twitter feed at DeMichael C. Uh, first off, how he reacted to John Morant, right? That would be a pretty significant update. Uh, he thinks that the discipline from the NBA was appropriate. He talked about how, John Morant was going to be talking with the MBPA and other sources trying to figure out what his next steps are. He wanted to reiterate that Ja loves being in Memphis. He wanted to reiterate that the team supports Ja, but at the same time, Morant has to take accountability for his actions. It's on him to make the changes necessary and climb and to paraphrase uh, said a lot of those things. Kleiman was very confident that Steven Adams would be ready to go for the start of the regular season. That is a major positive. Of course, we saw how significant the Adams absence was to these Grizzlies in the months that followed the long-term uh, sidelining of Steven Adams. He's so big. He's so strong, an excellent screener, an excellent rebounder. He contributes in so many ways to winning basketball without having to score. Getting him back will most certainly be helpful. Uh, another fun update was Brandon Clark. Should be back for a good portion of the season, whatever the heck good portion means. Maybe that's half the season. Maybe that's 30 games. Uh, DeMichael and I in the past here on Lockdown Grizzlies have prognosticated maybe around the all-star break. You could see Brandon Clark. That would still put him at about 30-ish games that he could be available for. And his rehab appears to be going well. He, he's working hard, and I hope that he's able to come back in that time frame. So we got a bit of an injury update on Adams and Clark. Nothing too groundbreaking with the final roster spot. Again, I'm reading these from DeMichael Cole's Twitter account at DeMichael C. That's fascinating to me. We'll cover it more later on in the show. But how that final roster position after Gigi Jackson gets signed to a two-way contract, 
after the Tyus Jones for Marcus Smart swap, obviously including other pieces, there's still one open roster position. How are the Grizzlies going to fill it? What do they see that flexibility or the need for flexibility from that position being? That's something to keep an eye on as the summer goes on. Speaking of summer, summer league, of course, a couple of weeks away. The Grizzlies will be sending players like Jake LaRavia, David Roddy, Vince Williams Jr., Kenneth Lofton Jr., Gigi Jackson. All those dudes are going to be involved in Memphis Grizzlies Summer League. But one name that was not mentioned, one name that was not brought up by Zach Kleiman was Zaire Williams. Was that just a slip? Was that a situation where, ah, uh, you know, we, I should have said Zaire, I didn't. Maybe there's some discontent for Zaire in terms of being asked potentially, again, hypothetically speaking, no inside info here, uh, to play Summer League. I think that would be kind of messed up because Xavier Tillman went and played Summer League last year, if you remember correctly. Nobody is above that necessarily if you are not a star, if you're not someone who has proven your value at that level. And Zaire Williams most certainly has not done that. So I found it interesting that a lot of the usual young suspects will be joining the Grizzlies in Summer League. But Zaire Williams was not a name that was mentioned. Again, G.G. Jackson expected to be on a two-way contract, which helps with the roster flexibility. The Grizzlies are going to leave that one roster spot open that they would likely use in free agency. So that those are the highlights coming from the Michael Cole, my wonderful co-host here at the Commercial Appeal at, or excuse me, at the Commercial Appeal. He is where he writes. I write at Bluff City Media. We combine here at Locked On Grizzlies. I love listening to Zach Kleiman because it happens so rarely. He is not a GM that is out in the open consistently, but it gets a, a peek into the window of what Memphis sees themselves as, what their plans are. The Marcus Smart trade was the major piece of the puzzle in this particular section of the offseason, but the Grizzlies still have enough money under the tax where they could go be a mid-level exception player. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But the ability for Kleiman to kind of play his hand close to the chest is a significant advantage for Memphis, in my opinion. You can come in and negotiate deals from a position of strength if people genuinely have no idea what you might be doing. Are you going to try to improve your offensive line and buy hand shields, right, from a football perspective? If you're a basketball coach, if your team is bad at handling the ball, are you going to go get – more cone drills? Are you going to go do more research on hand drill specific kinds of things? I think that it's really going to be interesting to see how these Grizzlies function moving forward in a place where they know what they have to get better at, where you have players like Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. who are going to have to take on so much more of the brunt of the work because John Morant is out. You have to reintegrate Marcus Smart, or not reintegrate, just integrate Marcus Smart. How all of that is going to fit and jive is really going to bear watching because of the level of commitment, the level of talent that this Grizzlies roster says to have. And I do think that, again, the, the Zaire Williams conspicuous by his absence idea. Is there a trade coming? That's speculative. I don't know that we're quite that far. But Zach Kleiman has gone out of his way including Zaire Williams, to mention guys that he thinks are worthy of mentioning when it comes to the long-term plans of the Memphis Grizzlies. Zaire Williams perhaps conspicuous by his absence. But David Roddy, Jake LaRavia, Kenneth Lofton Jr., Vince Williams, uh, Gigi Jackson, they're all going to be heading to Las Vegas and I think Utah for summer league play here in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch and see NBA basketball with the Memphis Grizzlies involved again. Very much looking forward to that uh, and very much looking forward to the next time that Zach Kleiman talks to the media, maybe after a major trade, maybe after a free agent signing, because he, again, the Grizzlies as an organization play things relatively close to the chest. They don't want their vision fully on display for the world to see, but you have breadcrumbs, you have bits and pieces, and these press availabilities are a good example of that. From John Morant's uh, accountability for what's going on in his life, all the way down and through the concept of what's G.G. Jackson going to be. Zach Kleiman, media availability, highly recommend you find it on YouTube or uh, wherever you may be able to find it podcast-wise 
if you had to miss it. Free agency is coming. No major moves, according to Zach Kleiman. Again, to use his words, nothing too groundbreaking. But what exactly does that mean? We'll talk about it next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theaters near you. Killer deals on last minute tickets with best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over tickets. You can get images of the seat views where you'll be taking your seat with the lowest price guarantee, as well as event cancellation, protection, and other options. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Get image uh, by tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're all set. It's the fastest growing ticket ticket app in the country for a reason. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LockedOnNBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. You can create an account and redeem the code LockedOnNBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. This episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Obviously, the NBA season has come and gone, but Prize Picks is still very much active. Remember, you're going against the projections, not against other people. Maybe you're a basketball fan. Chances are you are if you are listening to or watching this podcast and you're bummed out that the season is over. What are you going to bet on? Well, you got the WNBA. You've got Major League Baseball, PGA Tour. All sorts of different sports are represented through prize picks. And again, you are focused on more than, less than, uh, excuse me, more than or less than a given stat group, not so much focused on competing against individuals in fantasy sports directly. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit 50 bucks, Prize Picks will give you 50 bucks. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Free agency is next. Brief preview coming up next here on Locked On Grizzlies. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am your host, Joe Monax, flying solo on this Friday post NBA draft edition of Locked On Grizzlies. The Michael Cole, my wonderful co host, beat writer for the Memphis Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee, unable to join us, had a ton of work to do. Didn't go to bed until around 4 o'clock in the morning. Get some sleep, partner. I got you. I'll, I'll take care of you. I promise. And that's exactly what we're doing here on our week-ending edition of the show. We talked about Gigi Jackson at the jump. It, there's no harm in the pick, right? If it fails, it was 45. It was unlikely you were finding the next Nikola Jokic anyway. He's a young player with high upside. Give it a swing. There were more prepared prospects. That maybe could have helped more in a pinch. If Memphis wanted to go that route, they chose to go with the young upside swing who could uh, bust and not have success. That's okay. I, I think that they are in a position where they can eat that if that occurs. So Gigi Jackson has some time to develop in the Grizzlies system now. We also talked about Zach Kleiman's media availability. And he talked about not to expect anything groundbreaking when it comes to the 15th and final roster spot for the Memphis Grizzlies. But that's an interesting Comment, what do we mean by groundbreaking? Chris Middleton is technically a free agent. Fred Van Vliet, also technically a free agent. I'm just throwing out those two names. I'm guessing when he says nothing necessarily groundbreaking, Memphis won't be pursuing those types of top, of, top, of, uh, of prospects. They won't be getting that type of player. What they will be doing is still exploring the various ways that they can try to get this roster better. And even with Kleiman saying what he did in his end of season media availability, I believe that is the case because of his actions. Because for the first time, he, again, we talked about it yesterday, he didn't go all in per se. He didn't push all his chips into the middle of the table, but he did give up some of his chips. He did place a bet on Marcus Smart being a really good fit with the Memphis Grizzlies. I think he will be, so does DeMichael. But it is a bet. You're giving up, on, or you didn't give up. You're moving along from Tyus Jones, who we'll talk more about on our Monday edition of the show. You're moving on from Tyus. You're giving up some of your draft capital that you've accumulated. And you are hoping that Smart is going to be the player that you need him to be both on and off the floor, not just as a combo guard that can play alongside John Morant, 
but also as a leader in that locker room that helps develop these young Grizzlies players into better people, better men, however you want to describe it. That level of leadership is needed. Are they done bringing in veteran leadership? I'm leaning towards the answer being no. And whether it's a player like Harrison Barnes, who obviously has played some successful basketball between Golden State and Sacramento most recently, whether it's Bruce Brown, everybody's in vogue, free agency target, maybe the full mid-level exception, which Memphis has about $12.2 million per year on average. Maybe that won't be enough to get those guys. But I do think conversations need to be had. And I'm hopeful that the Grizzlies understand that while Marcus Smart is a wonderful addition, him being your starting small forward is far from ideal. Brandon Ingram exists. Kevin Durant exists. Luka Doncic exists in the Western Conference. And the Grizzlies currently, aside from Smart, who is an elite defender, but he is also undersized when compared to those larger wings. Zaire Williams, not ready to see that being in a playoff series anytime soon, at least his uh, style of play. Same thing with David Roddy. And I like David Roddy a lot. I've talked highly about Zaire Williams throughout my time here on this show. The team needs more veteran presence and more veteran contributing. They've started down that path with Marcus Smart. I think that they'll continue to do so with that 15th and final roster spot. They almost certainly will not leave it open. If you can't afford Harrison Barnes, maybe you go bargain basement hunting a little bit more. There will be other targets that you could potentially acquire through free agency, promising them the opportunities that come with being part of this Grizzlies roster. But something to keep in mind as free agency approaches, you've got at least two guys in Brandon Clark and John Morant who will most certainly not be ready for opening night. Obviously, Clark is recovering from his Achilles tendon injury, and even more obviously, John Morant serving a 25-game suspension to start the 2023-2024 campaign. One of the good things about Marcus Smart being here, right, that eases that load and that burden a little bit on Desmond Bain, Luke Kennard as that facilitator of offense. But it's still... It would be nice to have someone who could come in and be that level of player. So while a true center might be nice, somebody to back up Steven Adams, while I'm sure there will be arguments made for all sorts of different archetypes of players, I think that they can still find a way to bring in a starting small forward through that last spot on the roster. The Grizzlies are currently 16 or so million under the luxury tax. They could go and do a sign and trade with Jill and Brooks bring in a player around that time or around that frame of money. And Memphis would be looking at a roster that keeps them out of the luxury tax. I think that's eventually going to have to happen as Desmond Bain gets an extension, hopefully this summer. But you're, you're, you see a team that isn't going to go out and get OG Ananobi. That obviously isn't going to occur. This is a team that isn't going to go and try to pursue Chris Middleton or Fred Van Vliet. Insert, you know, Kyrie Irving's name here, or James Harden. There's no star chasing here. The Grizzlies believe they already have their stars. They're just young, and they need guys around them that can accentuate and help develop their skills, their personalities, getting them to a place where they are professionals in every sense of the word, not because they're making money, because it's the right way to do things. It's the right way to keep their bodies right, and that comes with age and wisdom. Gigi Jackson's not going to have either of those things because he's so young, and that's all right. The G League will be his friend. but. For David Roddy, for Jake LaRavia, who co-host Michael is so infatuated with as a shooter, I need to see it. Because until I see it, I'm going to want them to go and pursue free agency options. They did not address that problem in the draft. They addressed backup point guard. They addressed elite perimeter defender. But they have not addressed starting wings, larger bodied wings guys that can replace what Dylan Brooks was physically as a six foot seven type of wing. It might be impossible for Memphis to bring in that kind of person, but it's important that they try, obviously. And it's also significant that as NBA free agency opens, the Memphis Grizzlies do still have that one open roster spot. Chances are there will be something involving that getting uh, mixed up here in the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for checking out Lockdown Grizzlies wherever you are, however you're listening or watching to the podcast. It is appreciated. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe over on YouTube as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another successful week for us 
here at Lockdown Grizzlies. And thank you to my partner, to Michael Cole, for filling in for me for a couple of days earlier in this week. I'm excited to be back, at least for the next couple of weeks. Vacation comes during the summer, as it does for all of us. But that's a couple weeks down the road. I hope to be here just about every day talking Memphis Grizzlies basketball with you, starting, obviously, continuing on Monday. And on our Monday edition of the podcast, I think it's going to be a great time to talk about Tyus Jones, saying goodbye to him, reflecting on what we liked best about Tyus. I'm going to hopefully bury the idea that he was the best backup point guard in the NBA because he wasn't. He was a substitute point guard when John Morant wasn't able to be there. As a starter, Tyus is fantastic, and that's exactly what he's going to get to be with the Washington Wizards. But he will never be a starter with the Memphis Grizzlies. And unlike Marcus Smart, Tyus Jones cannot play consistently with John Morant, and that is what led to Tyus's exit. Not necessarily anything bad that Tyus did. So we'll talk about Tyus. We'll talk about the upcoming free agency, all those fun things on next Monday's Locked on Grizzlies. Again, thank you so much for joining me wherever you're checking me out as a podcast host. How do I look? Mm. Checking me out. We appreciate you listening, watching, rating, reviewing, subscribing, liking, commenting, all of those fun things. The Memphis Grizzlies have Gigi Jackson in the fold. They have Marcus Smart in the fold. The team definitely looks different now than they did just a couple of days ago. And we're going to continue to monitor and analyze those changes here on Locked On Grizzlies. Stay locked in. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Enjoy time with family and friends. We'll catch you right back here on Monday.